Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another Dooms of a Masket video. This time we're making it simple. I have gathered a lot of tips and tricks that I've seen not many people know while raiding. And honestly, unless you have four sons, three daughters, wife and wife's boyfriend to take care of while having a full time job, there is no excuse you haven't tried out Dooms of a Masket yet. You can do this. I believe in you. Now, I promise, these tips are actually somewhat useful and I would never say things like when practicing Doha with new invocations, make sure you drop your expensive items on the floor right before you die to reduce the coffer fee, because that tip is just too 5 head even for me. And I swear, if one person in the comment says purple stone exists just like Batman's parents, I will permanently ban you. Let's get started. Tip number one. How to do 30 second seabuck puzzle 100% of the time. I will show you an example and from now on, if I ever see you raiding again, you have no excuse to do seabuck puzzle in over 35 seconds. Okay, let's do this. First of all, before we start the puzzle, I want you to mark these two dials. The left one is where you start the puzzle and the right one is where you click after you pick up your water container. Here we go. You start on the dial, make sure you can left click, quick pass on the red flames, go pick up your water container from here. As soon as you see the animation start, you click on the second dial you marked. As soon as your character steps on the second tile, you run like forest to the waterfall. Doesn't matter if you take damage here, it could be avoided but we're doing this simple. As you can see my character isn't fully on the tile yet, but it actually is and those are called true tiles. You can check your account true tile by downloading the tile indicator plugin, which will show you where your character is actually standing on. Moving on, you just straight run to the waterfall and now the most important part, you have to use the water container on the waterfall. Not just left click on the waterfall as it saves you an entire tick. Once again when the animation starts you run straight line back to the bomb and we repeat the same thing again here while running to the bomb make sure you use your water container on the bomb to save an entire tick. Now there is a plugin called Menu Entry Swapper that allows you to left click your water container and set it to use. Once you use the water container on the bomb and you see the animation, you click on the minimap and run straight to the other waterfall. And now we repeat the exact same process again where you use the water container on the waterfall to save us an entire tick and then voila, you completed the Seabox puzzle in 30 seconds without any of the crocodiles getting to it. Congratulations! I know I said waterfall like 7 million times right now, but I hope I made myself very clear. Happy puzzle solving! Next up, this isn't a tip, just a heads up. The meta currently is that you do Seabuck first, Gefri second, then you get your salts, then you do Akka third and then Baba as the last boss. Through millions of runs, players have figured out this is the most optimal setup. You take power option with salts after Seabuck and Gefri, and you take life option after Akka and Baba. Tip number two, Gefri will always throw his tongue special attack based on the party order. It's not random, so the party leader and the second in line will always be the one who get dunked first and the special attack will go down in line. So let's say you're doing 8 man raids and you are 4th person in the group. You now know the second dunk attack will be towards you. This is a great way to find out how to stack the dunk so players don't get stuck in the room or even better, how to get the melee scarab stuck on the dunk. Now, how do you get the melee scarab stuck? Great question, my dear viewer. In order to trap Kefri's melee scarab, one person has to stand here and the other one here. When Kefri starts his special attack, you will be covered in flies. If that happens, you move three tiles back and the tongue row will be straight instead of going into the corner. Here's what happens if you stand on the green dial. As you can see, it still traps the melee, but you block in a lot more of the room. The benefits of trapping the melee dung is that if you have a fang, if you have blue carry spiders on, you will always out damage the melee scarab heal and it just allows you to ignore it completely. There we go, now you have no excuse not to use this method as it could really help you deal with everything else in the room and ignore the melee scarab. Let's continue. This fact will not count as the 7 I have planned for you, but just a fun little PSA. Dying on the same tick as Demi Boss in DOA will not count as hardcore death. So if you ever had the case where Baba, Akka, Siba, Kefri or even Wardens and you die at the same exact time, you will not lose your hardcore status because as soon as the boss dies, the room is considered cleaned out and every death afterwards is not counted. Tip number 3. If you are in Akka's puzzle room, the black orbs can sometimes stack on top of each other even though it appears that there is only one orb. Jagex even made a raid title if you die in the light room called the Mods. 
bonus tip, here is how you one shot Arcas puzzle with 82 mining and dragon pickaxe. Firstly, go to plugin hub again and download a plugin called Visual Metronome. As you can see on the top right corner, there is a box right now that counts from 1 to 9 ticks. That is because Arcas puzzle room lightning beam is on 9 tick cycle. All you have to do is remember on which tick you enter the room, so for me it was on tick 4, which means every time the number on my top right corner gets to 4, the lightning beam shoots out and that gives you an indication on when to click on the obelisk. So I set my puzzle up, but I leave the first piece of the mirror in the wrong way to make sure I get that correctly last, set everything else up in the room and then make sure to wait until the number on the top right corner goes to 4, use my dragon pick expect at the right time and you will 100% always get 8 hits no matter what. Also, I have seen a lot of players lose their mining hits because they want to dodge the black orbs if it's coming towards them. There is actually a way to not lose any ticks while mining. All you have to do is walk two tiles once you see your mining experience drop and then click back on the obelisk guaranteeing you not to get hit by black balls and also not miss any ticks on the obelisk. There we go. Tip number 4. Let's talk about Baba's puzzle room, something everyone hates. Firstly, the minions in the room. One of the most annoying minions is the Baboon Shaman. Did you know that the Shaman has a cap on how many trolls it can spawn? After it has spawned 4 or 5 trolls, it instead starts attacking you with magic attack and that is very deadly. If that magic attack deals 15 damage, you also lose 15 prayer points. So it's essential to always kill Baboon Shamans first no matter what. Furthermore, the draws that do spawn from Baboon's Shamans also can drain your prayer, even if you correctly pray against them, which is why again Shamans should be your number one priority. During the first few waves, all Baboons need to be killed in the room to progress. During waves 3 to 9, a single Baboon can be left alive to progress to the next wave. In wave 10, two Baboons can be left alive to progress to the next wave. To clear the challenge, however, all enemies need to be killed. After wave 6, slightly stronger combat baboons will start to spawn. The site in Baba's room aka the leader who has to make the call will change randomly every 30 seconds, however the first site will always go to the player who enters first in the room. The call outs if you don't have a voice chat goes as follow, V for vents, P for pillars and DD for corruption. Corruption spots are usually either the south side of the statue in the middle marked with the tile or the west side if the south side is occupied by venom. Now let me give you a quick tip while hunting Baba himself. Everybody knows that when boulder attack comes, the most deadly attack by Baba, you can use the big pile of rubble to absorb basically all damage or the sarcophagus to absorb 50% of the damage. But you can also use Baba's small baboons to absorb the damage and it's actually Quite funny, if you stand next to the balloons, you both will take a hit. It's not the most optimal setup, but it's just a quick tip in a dire situation. Another thing, if you're running low on supplies in the bubble room and you have a blowpipe, I highly recommend you use blowpipe spec on the boulders coming down the hill as you will always, always hit your max hit with a blowpipe spec, which heals you a lot of HP. 100% of your spec bar can be turned into 50 HP, which could be the difference between life and death. There we go. That was a lot of tips in one number. Let's keep going. Tip number 5. Let's dive into Wardens now. For phase 1 Warden, all you have to do is block 6 or 7 orbs in total for it to be off base. I've seen many players take unnecessary damage that could be avoided. For phase 2 Warden, the Eastern Warden will always use Mage with his right hand and Range with his left hand. That tip gives you way more time to swap prayers if you start paying attention to the hands instead of waiting for the projectile to appear. The same thing can be said with sounds. If you can play off sounds better, here's what you do. If there's no sound, it's a mage attack. If there's a loud ding noise, then it's a range attack. The windmill special attack, one of the things I've seen players struggle the most. The tip here will be to stay inside the circle and you have to run less. The wider outways you go, the more wider the windmill also gets. As you can see, I'm standing next to the obelisk and the windmill is only one tile wide. If I was to go outside the arena, it would be up to five tiles wide, which gives you much less time to react. The laser beams coming out of the ground, there is a very simple solution to this. There's actually a safe spot just for this on the corners of the map and no laser will touch you. And finally, this cause more and more players are stopping to run away from them and rather walk on the same row as the skulls. What I mean by that is, let's say a skull spawns and and you see the shadow where it's gonna land. You can stay two tiles diagonally or horizontally from the skull and it has a gap between the attack where you avoid every single damage.
Tip number 6. Ok, let's get to the final rooms of Raid 3. Firstly, when you get to the lightning phase, this is what everyone is doing right now. Nobody is looking at the warden because he doesn't have any indication when attacks come. The goal here is to stay on the left side of the map and only look at two things. What is either Seabuck or Akka doing and what tiles on the ground you should be standing on. That's it. Those are the two things you only need to pay attention to. You don't see it right now, but throughout this clip I have not once looked at Warden because I know the general area of his click box and I don't need to pay attention to him. Okay, next thing. The skulls have defined order and aren't random. There are two ways skulls go here. For solos it goes like this. First is the four skulls in a circle. Second is five. I did mess up here, so don't, don't pay attention to that, but that's like the gist of it. You can one shot all of them. Third is six skulls like this, and the fourth is the most amount of skulls, but as you can see, you can still one shot it without having to lose any dicks. And for team skulls, I will show you this picture. This is always gonna be the same for teams of two to eight people. Feel free to pause the video and thank you to Toa Resources for providing the public this information. Standing in the back of the room and ranging will give you an extra tick to move to the correct side of the arena, as opposed to if you're standing in the front of the warden, you will have less time to react. The Warden's defense level on both phases can be lowered by maximum of 60 with PGS. This goes for both phases, at the start of the fight and at the last phase, as we call it holy moly smokes, what is going on, I don't know what's happening phase. So for both of them make sure you use your PGS and I highly recommend you not use Dragon Warhammer as it lowers based on percentage defense and every single boss in Raid 3 works off flat defensive rate, where BGS shines more. Once you follow all of these runes, your raid time should always go down by a few minutes, which means in the long term you will have more chance of getting purples. Okay, and time for the final tip, tip number 7. Let's talk about Yellow Gary's Partisan and how it's one of the most OP items in raids. And if you have that, you should always have it in your inventory when you go raiding. It has total of 4 different effects in the raid, which is nutty. So let's go over all 4 of them and see how they do. Firstly, it deals 33% bonus damage against Skefri. Easy to understand, also it has a 1 in 51 chance of dealing triple damage and trust me, I've seen people hit 150s with that, it's absolutely crazy. The second unique effect is that it has 25% increased accuracy to targets that are below 25% health. So it's a really good KO weapon for Kefri as well. And thirdly, whenever you kill a target, you will restore 12 hit points at the cost of 5 prayer points. This effect can also overheal you. So you know those little annoying swarms at Kefri? Every time you kill one of them, it heals you for 12 HP and also Blood Fury works fully off this, so you can basically get over 20 HP back by just killing one swarm. You should never have less than full HP in this room. And fourthly, the most OP special attack in raids, the yellow carries partisan 1. You lose 50 prayer points but you gain full HP that overheals you, it will cure your poison and venom, restore your run energy and most importantly it restores all your drain stats. So let's calculate how OP this is. Firstly the cost. 50 prayer points equals to 2 doses of prayer potion inside the raid which costs you around 5k. Let's call that 100% of the cost. What you will get back as the maximum potential is around 1.5 brews worth of HP which is the most common food used in raids which equals to 12k GP. Then it will also cure your venom and poison which equals to about 3k GP in costs. And you will restore your run energy which equals to 1 dose of stamina potion aka 2k GP. And finally it restores all your stats which on average 1 dose of super restore potion does as well which is also the most common item people take to raids and that costs 3k GP. So for 5k cost you will get maximum value of 20k GP back per special attack cast. Now I will say that you won't always get maximum value of this. What makes this weapon so special is the versatile options you have. You can just poke it in Kefri's room and get full HP, you can use the special attack and use it as an extra pseudo Ambrosia dose, you can use it as a KO weapon in Kefri as well, or just an overall DPS weapon in lower raids. It even works on Baba when you want budget setup because it's a staff weapon, which Baba is weak to. So even if you don't get maximum value every time, I still always take that weapon with me 
because that one extra inventory slot makes up for all the benefit it gives. You never know when a raid could go slightly wrong and it's a good to have that backup with you. I save on supplies, it's a decent mid-level weapon, especially for Iron Man who lacks supplies. The downside is it might take you multiple raids before you get the yellow jewel. The upside however is it doesn't matter what raid level you do, you will always have the same chance of receiving the Geris parties on crystals from chests. And there we go, those were my 7 tips for tombs of a mascot with some extra spicy ones added in. I hope you learned something from this video and if you want to support me I just started my own Patreon, it's patreon.com Gravers. I thank you so much for watching this video and here's a free kiss for you. Mwah. Bye!